Now, there's supposed to be a sermon and somebody's speaking. <laughs> <laughs> don't really re I don't really know who that is, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, today I want to talk about charity. Um, being charitable, <clears throat> helping those who have less. Um, and we're going to look at it from, first we're going to look at it from uh, some religious sources. And then we're going to have Bob's opinion on charity today. So that should be fun. <laughs> so, let's start over here. Taoism is a quote. If Tao perishes, then virtue per will perish. If virtue perishes, then charity will perish. If charity perishes, perishes, then righteousness will perish. So they're covering their bases all the way around. Um, from Buddhism, you perform real charity if you can give freely without expecting anything in return. With Zoroastrianism, I think I did something on them once. <laughs> is be good, be kind, be humane and charitable. Love your fellows, console the afflicted, Pardon those who have done you wrong. We also have one that I kind of like um, from the same the Zoroastrians. A good deed is like peeing in your pants. <laughs> Everyone knows you did it, but only you can feel its warmth. <laughs> yeah, I just couldn't get past that one. <laughs> okay. In, uh, for Hinduism, since they're not here, I'm not even going to try and speak the Hindu portion of this, but the translation in English is earn as if you have a hundred hands, but donate as if you have a thousand hands. So, they're all talking about being charitable, taking care of the poor and such. Let's see, uh, we'll do Islam from the Quran. And this to be honest, is, is the one that I have at the house. It is not my favorite translation, um, but it still gets across the same message. O oh, believers, do not nullify your charity by giving to oblige and flaunting, like a man who spends, his, spends of his wealth only to show off, but does not believe in God and the last day. His semblance is that of a rock covered with earth, which is washed away by rain, exposing the hard rock bare, so they gain nothing from their earnings. God does not guide, a pe guide people who, ha who do not believe, but the semblance of those who expend their wealth to please God with firm and resolute heart is like a garden on a height on which the rain falls and it yields its fruits twice as much. And even if the rain does not fall, the dew will suffice. For God sees all that you do. Okay, now, let's get to the Bible. <coughs> From the Old Testament, we'll call, I believe it's the Tanakh for the Jewish. <coughs> we have from Deuteronomy 
uh, chapter 15, verse 11. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy, to, and to thy poor, and to the needy, thy needy in thy land. Now, where's my piece of paper? I think that's it. Oh, no, that's not it. Mm -hmm. I gotta switch to the whole other side of the book. It's a big book. But we'll go to Matthew 6, 2 through 4. Therefore, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they, shall, they have their reward. But when thou doesn't, when thou dost alms, let thy left hand know what the right hand, let not the left hand know what the right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So, it seems that the main religions in this world seem to believe in charity or have been taught from the great teachers that we see in the world to be charitable and to help the poor and the needy <clears throat> and thy brother if he needs it. Okay, wait, let me disclaimer. The rest of this is Bob's opinion. Okay, it is written down. It's not written down anywhere. It's not copy written. You know, it's, it's my opinion. Okay. So, in today's day, this doesn't, you, you do, you, I can't say everybody for any of the religions. But I can say what I see around in a large part. And in a large part, I don't see most people being charitable. That does not include us, because I think we do very well. But you will see things like the people who try to make themselves look charitable. Bill Gates, you know, I will give half of my earnings to charity. He's out there, he's saying, I'm going to give half my earnings to charity. Okay, well, that's real good for charity. Because the charity gets, what, five, five million, five billion something a year? Five million? And, uh, but then he's still got five million more. Billion. Billion, billion excuse me. <laughs> how, much, how, how much money do you need? <coughs> you know, so yes, he is giving and giving a lot to charity. So you don't want to really say anything about it, but he's out there telling you. And I noticed that uh, that didn't actually happen until he had his wife. <laughs> That his wife is probably the one who said, we need to give some of this away. But, not facts, opinions. Okay. But we have people in this day and age who will send millions of dollars overseas for the poor. And they might even spend a little money in their community. But yet they'll say that the poor here in America are just lazy. And that bothers me. 
They searched the whole country and found one surfer dude who was abusing his food stamps, who was abusing his friends for their homes, and they made him the flagship for the poor. Well, that's not how most poor are. Most poor are living in a shack downtown. And my town, there's little places you can go, and you really don't want to go down that street, but they have made little sheds and such into houses for people to live. They don't have running water. And that's poor. That's not lazy. Lord knows you don't want to live in that. I wouldn't want to live in my shed. <coughs> uh, we have poor out in the county. Farmers. Farmers are getting less and less uh, monetarily. Can't pay their rent. <coughs> or, excuse me, not to rent their mortgage. Because the land is expensive. And there's virtually nothing that you can do on a property. Well, I'll say it like this. If you want to start a farm and you don't have property, and most of the time equipment already paid for, you can't start a farm. You can't afford to buy the land, the equipment, and start a farm that will bring a profit. And that turned a lot of farmers, even though they have the land and they have the equipment, their crops are becoming worth so little that they're, they're starting to be poor. Not everybody, but you have some kids who are learning to live very frugally because the money's not flowing in like it used to. So yeah, you go by and they've got a hundred acres, thousand acres, and they've got what you know seems to be a nice big house. Just needs a little repair from what you can see on the outside. But they can't repair it. And maybe the machine broke that plows the field. And they can't afford to fix it. There is real poor in our country. And I find it terrible that people would say our poor just want to be there. That's what, how they want to be. Our poor who are struggling. They talk about cutting food stamps. In the United States military, in the enlisted class, you are under the poverty level and qualify for food stamps, qualify for families first here in this state. And they do this up through the rank of E4. If you're single, you can kind of make it. <clears throat> You throw a wife and kid into that, you're going to have to take it, take some money in. You're going to have to accept money. I mean, it's been hard for me um, to accept and well, I actually file for disability. Um, that whole process has just torn my mind up because um, I've never wanted to take anybody's money. But... Uh, at a certain point, your pride has to, has to go away. And uh, so it's difficult. It's difficult for a lot of people who are poor that don't want to get what's, what they can get. And we do a lot as a church for our community, and I like that. But each community doesn't have a church like this. If they weren't poor, we wouldn't need five loaves. If 
if they weren't poor, we wouldn't need Head Start. If they weren't poor, we would, we'd have too much money for everybody. But then the economy would go just like it should. And eventually, it's going to happen again, and we're going to have poor. So, I don't mean to be depressing, but I want, I believe most of you are charitable people. I've seen it in your eyes and in your hearts. And I probably am trying to be more charitable and do more than I, than I have before. Uh, because I see it in me too. You know, I see it if I pass somebody that's begging on the street, who cares if he's poor or not? You know, some of them may be scamming somebody. But if I had it, I'd drop a dollar in every one of those plates. But I have to say no a lot. Um, but I'm trying to do what I can and better myself and hopefully set a good example for my son. Um, and my body's limited now to what I can do, but I can do some things and I try to do what I can. And my hope is that everyone will try to do what they can. I don't think it'll happen, but that's what I'm hoping for. Because if everybody did what, what they could, everyone could have a decent life. There'll still be the rich guys with, you know, 15 planes. But it wouldn't be as bad as it is. I don't know who of you have seen the bad part, have lived through the bad parts. I have. And it's not fun. It's not fun at all. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm uh, sorry to be depressing, but sometimes I am. And uh, it's something that bothers me. <laughs>